Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodwill, and over there is John Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Tower Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7589 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Before we get into our show today, where we have a full group on deck, we've got the Admirals versus the Stars, the Preds and the Coyotes and the Atlanta Gladiators and South Carolina Stingray. But before we get into all of that, I would like to thank and congratulate the Packers on their season. I know that it ended not the way a lot of Packer fans wanted, but to make it this far with this younger team, it's only up from here. So, congratulations. Uh, also, congratulations to the 49ers on winning. All righty, on to the Arizona game, which we also would like to apologize for our graphics saying Phoenix Coyote. Oh, does it? Yes. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the Nashville Predators took on the Arizona Coyotes today. Shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshoots Arizona 12 to 6. In the second period, Nashville outshoots Arizona 13 to 11. In the third period, both teams had seven shots. And in total, Nashville outshoots Arizona 32 to 24. Um, Arizona was better on the face-off circle at 52.6% to Nashville's 47.4%. On the power play, Nashville goes 1 for 6 with 4 penalty minutes, while Arizona goes 0 for 2 with 12 penalty minutes. Arizona had 28 hits to Nashville's 26. Arizona had 18 blocked shots to Nashville's 12. Arizona had 11 giveaways to Nashville's 6. And Arizona had seven takeaways to Nashville's five. Scoring in the first period for Arizona was Keller scoring his 18th of the year at the 952 mark, assisted by Gunther, his second, and Dersey, his 19th. Then in the second period for Arizona, Keller scores again, scoring his 19th at the 120 mark of the second period. Assisted by Maselli, his 23rd. Then scoring also the second at the 342 mark on the power play is Roman Yossi, his ninth with an assist from Gustav Nyquist, his 24th, and uh, Colton Sissons, his 11th. Uh, that puts Roman Yossi uh, number one all-time in goal scoring for a defenseman in the Nashville Predators history. Um, then scoring at the 950 mark was Michael Carcon, uh, former Preds. Uh, he was with the Preds for a little bit um, during the COVID year. Uh, he scored uh, his 15th with an assist from McBain, his 7th, and Jersey his 20th. In the third, Tommy Novak scores at the 18.44 mark with a, his eighth with an assist from Forsberg, his 27th, and Yossi, his 30th. The Preds have lost every game they have played against Arizona this season. Arizona is up 3-0 or 2 nothing in the series. The next time we play them is February 10th. Up next, the Admirals take on the Texas Stars. Uh, are we doing three stars? Are we doing three stars of the game for the, the Preds? Yeah, give me a second. Goaltending in that for the Preds was UC Saros stopping 21 of 24 with an 87.5 save percentage. In net for the Coyotes was Connor Ingram. He stopped... 30 of 32 with a 93.8 save percentage. Yes! Keeping uh, Lankinen was so much of a better idea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thanks, Poyle. 
Ah, uh, stars of the game. That's I can't. Um, Oh, I got it. Uh, third star of the game was Dersey for Arizona. He had two assists and two points. Um, second star was Keller for Arizona with two goals and two points. And first star was Connor Ingram for Arizona. All righty. Up next, we have the Admirals taking on the Texas Stars. In the first period, uh, both teams had 13 shots apiece. In the second period, Texas outshoots Milwaukee eleven to ten, and in the third period, Texas outshoots Milwaukee eleven to nine. Total shots are thirty-five to tw to thirty-two. Texas went one for four on the power play, while Milwaukee went one for five. Uh, Texas had six infractions with twelve minutes, while Milwaukee had seven with thirty. All because you know the referees are a bunch of little whiny crybabies. Because someone didn't like an embellishment call. Scoring in the first period was Zachary LaRue, his 10th with an assist from Igor Afanasiev, his 15th, and Mark Jankowski, his 27th. And then Jasper Weatherby scores his 7th with an assist from Reed Schaefer. Then the second at the 329 mark, the Admirals score with a goal from Spencer Stasny, his fourth. That was on the power play. Assisted by Fedor Svechkov, his 12th, and Roland McEwen, his ninth. Then at the 650 mark, Texas scores with a goal from Antonio Strongis, his eighth on the power play. Assisted by Riley Demiani, his 10th, and Gavin White, his fifth. Then at the 1036 mark, Texas scores again with a goal from Matea Blummel. His 15th on the year, assisted by Logan Stankoven, his 26th, and Maverick Bork, his 28th. Then at the 12.38 mark, the Admirals score with a goal from Reed Schaefer, his second of the year, assisted by Fedor Svechkov, his 13th. And then at the 13.09 mark, Texas scores again with a goal from Matea Blummel, his 16th, assisted by Logan Stankoven, his 27th, and Alex Petrovic, his 12th. In the third at the 1848, Markow O'Reilly scores his sixth of the season with an assist from Mark Jankowski, his 28th, and Anthony Angelo, his eighth. That was an empty netter. And though was I happy to see Cal O'Reilly score a goal. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't think I've been happier. Uh, near three starts of the game were Jasper Weatherby with a goal, uh, Mateo Blummel for the Texas Stars with two goals. And um, first star of the game was Reed Schaefer with an assist and the game-winning goal. In net for the Texas Stars was Remy Poirier. He stopped 27 of 31, while Yarrow was in net for the second night in a row. And had much better of a night, uh, stopping 32 of 35. Your coaches for Texas is Neil Graham uh, with it, as your head coach, assistant coach Maxine Fortunis, and Travis Moore, and goaltending coach Ryan McDaniels. Head coach for the Milwaukee Admirals is Kyle Taylor, assistant coach Scott Ford, and Greg Bravo. The Admirals are on a seven-game win streak, while Texas is on a five-game losing streak. The Admirals in their last ten are nine and one. The Admirals have a now eight point lead and move into fourth place in the entire or well actually we're tied for third. Actually I think we have we're tied for third, but the teams in front of us all have given us games in hand. Like we have five games in hand against Hershey for the number one spot. Um, but yeah, I mean, the closest team in our division, let's just put it this way. Milwaukee's fourth in league standing. Texas is 15th. All righty. Up next for the Admirals. The Admirals play on Wednesday. Um, well, Nashville plays on Monday versus the Panthers. Huh. Um, but 
just give you a little update on Bellevue since it's been a while. The Admirals in their last meeting have beaten beat them uh four to one. That was on October twenty-fifth. The Admirals in the last five seasons are five and oh against Bellevue. To say we've had their number is an understatement. Yeah. The last five games they lost, they are four and one as we are on a seven game win streak. Uh, the top players for Bellevue is Igor Sokolov. He has 12 goals, 13 assists with 25 points. Angus Crookshanks for them is uh, 10 goals, 13 assists for 23 points. Garrett Pollen, or Pylan, uh, he has 9 goals, 13 assists for 22 points. Um, Ma uh, Messi Godet, uh, he has 4 goals, 8 assists, or 18 assists for 22 points. And Rovi Juvier. Uh, score has nine goals and eleven assists for twenty points. Top scores for the Admirals, obviously. I'm gonna read them off too while I'm at it. Uh, Mark Jankowski, eleven goals, twenty eight assists for thirty nine points. Igor Afanasia for seventeen goals, fifteen assists for thirty two points. Zachary Larue with ten goals, fifteen assists for twenty five points. Fedor Smetchkov, eleven goals, thirteen assists for twenty four points. And Joachim Kebel, he has nine goals, 13 assists for 22 points. The top four there are your future, Nashville. All righty. Up next, we have the South Carolina Stingrays at the Atlanta Gladiators. Ugh. All right. Shots on goal in the first period. Um... South Carolina outsheets Atlanta 13 to 11. In the second period, South Carolina outsheets Atlanta 19 to 12. In the third period, South Carolina outsheets Atlanta 11 to 8. Um, in overtime, South Carolina outsheets Atlanta 8 to 1. And in total, South Carolina outsheets Atlanta 51 to 32. Now on the power play, South Carolina went one for three with 10 minutes, five infractions, while Atlanta went one for three with 20 minutes, six infractions. All righty. Scoring in the first is Dolan Burke uh, with an assist from Zach Yoder and Jacob Graves. That was at the 726 mark. Then Everett Mutter scores, his, uh, scores at the 11-minute mark. With an assist from Nolan Burke. Um, and then at the 1659 mark, Jack Adams scores with an assist from Austin Megara and Jared Lucas Savages. I can't believe I remember how to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> he used to play for Grand Rapids. Okay. Then in the second period, Michael Miller scores at the 430 mark with an assist from Luca Prokop. Then at the 6.59 mark, South Carolina scores with a goal from Jack Adams, assisted by Garrett Hunt. Uh, that was at the 6.59 mark. Then at the 7.37 mark for South Carolina, Josh Wilkins scores, assisted by Connor Moore. Then in the third period, at the 3.36 mark for South Carolina, Josh Wilkins scores, assisted by Jared Lukosevich. And Michael Kim. Then at the 731 mark for Atlanta, Ryan Cranford scores, assisted by Luke Prokop and Cody Sylvester. And in overtime, Jack Adams scores with an assist from Austin Mangara at the 548 mark. At the same time, Navrin Butter was called for a 10-minute misconduct. Okay. Um, Atlanta's goal with Cranford with an assist from Brokoff and Sylvester. That was on the power play. Adam's goal with an assist from Megara and Lucas Savages was on the power play as well. In net for uh, Atlanta was Brad Barone. He stopped 46 of 51. 
And uh, how do you say your name, sir? Good Lord. Ah, okay. Uh, in net for South Carolina was Garen Bjorkland. Um, he stopped 28 of 32. Um, Atlanta gets a point in this one. Uh, your three stars in the game. Third star of the game was Michael Miller. Second star of the game was Roland Burke. First star of the game was Jack Adams for South Carolina. Your referees were Evan Roddick and David, David Roditz and Brady Fagan. Uh, attendance at the Gas South Arena was 7,880. Wow. All righty. Well, we all know, well, if you're a long-term time watcher of this podcast, we all know John's a huge Colorado fan. Mm -hmm. And one of their greatest players in their organization's history is back coaching again. Yeah. Congratulations to Patrick Waugh. We also um, are unfortunate that this year two former Admirals head coaches have been fired. Blaine Lambert, Dean Evanson. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, Patrick Waugh brings to his um brings to them a Jack Adams trophy that he won while coaching with uh Colorado. The question here becomes um they fired their coach. They're at 1915 and 11. Believe it or not, this team ain't even out of it yet. Right. Like, it's not like they're leaving a whole bunch of points on the board, if you will. Um, so, there's that as well. Um, but I mean, to be honest, let's let's just go honesty here. Um, what's your thoughts on on that? Because I I know I woke you up when I called you. That. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, huh? Definitely interesting, especially seeing as everyone assumed if he'd coach in the NHL again that it would be Montreal. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a little bit of a shocker, although he had been doing very well with the Quebec Ramparts. Um, he's had a couple of coaching stints of, with them. Uh, the he's part owner of the Ramparts, isn't he? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but, um... It, it'll definitely be interesting. He will make his coaching debut tomorrow against the Dallas Stars. Um, so, um, out of all this, I know we've had a long weekend as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. um, Podcast-wise. Um, how about this run that these boys have been on? Yeah, pretty great. Pretty fun. Um, seven straight. It's like the new year hit and <laughs> they right. were up and running. <laughs> um you know, um uh, obviously when we get Kebble back, when we get some of these guys who are a little banged up, um, you know, once we see once uh I think once Barry's back for Nashville, they're going to move him, obviously, like probably immediately. Um, but I, I honestly don't know where we go, but I do know one thing. Um, this team's destined for something. 
Yarrow's been playing phenomenal. I know yesterday he had, had a little bit of a rough go. Um, looked like his footing was a little off. Um, had a little bit of an off night, but every good goalie has an off night. Um, especially, it's not easy when you're playing the second place team in your division on back to back nights. You're starting both nights. Um, you know, uh, definitely a lot to look forward to. Um, Runs fans, start watching us, please. Even if you don't watch our podcast, start watching these guys. That we're the they're the future, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's a sale that goes on right after the All Star Game, so or right around the All Star Game, and that's coming up, so. You can jump on that. They may have a sale going. There may be something cool coming up. Um, plenty of cool stuff from the Admirals coming up. Thank you to the Wisconsin Badger Band for showing up tonight. That was another uh, another fun night for that. Um, I know that uh, a couple of the Admirals photographers were laughing watching our chat section during the game. <laughs> hmm. They they didn't even want to take you like you'd have had to send somebody with media with a like a phone to come watch us because we're just having too much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um much love for that. Um if I remember correctly. Um ah, also if you're a fan of Tesla, Saturday, call the Admirals. Not, not call him Saturday, call him Monday. But, no, it's not even Saturday, it's Friday. Friday, I think. We have Tesla coming up. I think Friday. Working on it. Yeah, it would be Friday. Yes, Friday. Tesla, along with Ian's Pizza, where if you take, uh, it's your student date, so if you have a high school or college ID, um, active, of course, you could get $13 and a slice of Ian's Pizza. And then on Tuesday the 30th is Hockey is for Everyone Night. That is also an autograph quarter. It's a witty weekday. And then we have on February 2nd the Admirals Brewers giveaway, which I just saw this thing. Um... John, do you have a um, mobile near you? Yeah, isn't it the Hawaiian shirt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know when I'd, if I ever would wear that thing, but uh, I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. And it'll be my third shirt this year uh, for whatever reason. Actually, fourth, because I'm going to get probably one of them pickleball shirts, too. Um, But, yeah, um, Admos fans and Preds fans. Preds fans, your future is bright. Um, Admos fans, your future is now. Because <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to hold on for one more year with Yarrow down here. I, I, I just don't see him here next year. I just don't. So, um,
That is all we have for you today. We are sorry about the dead air here. I was making sure I didn't miss anything. But like I said, upcoming, plenty of good stuff. See you guys on Monday. Peace.